you're on the Six Screens Telenetwork, earning the reputation of giving all the right ingredients, uninhibited, and exposing the hard, cold facts about the Watchtower Society. Well, hello everyone and welcome in, welcome in to another rockin' awesome night here at the Six Screens up in Boston. Well, my name is Rick Farron and I'm coming to you from the apostate capital of the world right up here in Boston, as we say. Friends, we are going to give you the news, the facts, the truth about the Watchtower organization. So stay with us tonight. I know you're going to enjoy the program. Uh, we'll have people calling in from pretty much all over the world. Uh, we have a woman coming in in about an hour from Australia, and she's going to talk to us about a petition. She's trying to stop the European governments from giving the Jehovah's Witnesses more money in charity. So she'll be coming on in about an hour from now. So we're looking forward to that program. Well, anyways, things are happening. I hope things are going well where you are. I, I hope that you're really enjoying the day. Uh, we see spring coming. The leaves up here are starting to bud. And, oh, we're getting into a better season now. So that's always good. Now, I wanted to mention, too, that we do have a duck. Uh, we have a duck. You know the duck. The duck will come down. If you hear this noise, If you hear that duck quack, the duck will come down. He has a gift for you. And tonight we get some really, really good books. Uh, let me just change my camera setting here. And I, I want to show you, I want to show you the books that will be available tonight that you'll be able to win if you say the secret word. So let's take a look at the books. And there they are right there. You can see them. And uh, yeah, look at that. The Desolation of the Sanctuary. These are all books about the Watchtower. And some written by Watchtower, some not. And look at this one here, A People for His Name. And look at that, Millions Now Living Will Never Die. Well, we know all about that book, don't we? Well, that's an actual reproduction, actually a reprint of the original book, Millions Now Living Will Never Die. But here's what we're going to do. If the duck, if you say the secret word, tonight we actually have four secret words. Three, yeah, actually four secret words. Let me go back to our regular camera here. And uh, we got four secret words. Now, they're in this sealed envelope. At the end of the program, we will open this up. But I want to give some of these books away. Our good friend uh, out in Washington State goes by the name Nathan Natus. He's nice enough to give us these books. And he wants you folks to have them. So we thank, we thank Nathan Natus. You know him from JWN. But anyways, uh, try, try to get the, if you speak up. Now, you can't, you can't win the books if you don't call into the program. So by all means, call into the program, offer some suggestions, and in the confines of you talking, in your narrative, when you call in, if you say one of the words is in this envelope, you win the prize. You could win, in fact, we, we have a number of more books as well. Maybe you could win all four books. So at the end of the program, we'll, we'll tell you about the words and what the secret words are. All right, now let's take a look. Let's see what else is going on behind the curtains. Oh, I love this. I love it. I've been talking about it now for quite a while. But we're, of course, talking about, we're, we're, we're talking about Still Alive in 2025. Now, that is our convention. We are going to have the first of its kind ex-Jehovah's Witness convention. Now, there's been meetups. There's been little seminars. There's been little get-togethers. But this is a convention. And boy, do we have the people signing up for the convention. I'm going to show you some pictures. Let me show you some pictures of where that convention is going to be. I've been dealing with the uh, Hilton Hotel up here in Tewksbury, Massachusetts, right outside of Boston. But I'm going to put some pictures up. I want to get you guys excited. I'm very, very excited. I'm going to tell you what happened this week and how we got the rooms and what's going on. Let me, let me show you how nice these rooms are. Well, this is the Hilton Hotel. And let's see if we can't get that up. But look at that. That's inside. Look at the fire pit. Do you guys like a fire pit? And you can sit around and relax. That's the fire pit. And look at over here. Take a look here. That, that is the lobby. That is a beautiful lobby. This is a brand new hotel. And I am so pleased that we got the dates that we wanted it for. Now, let me tell you. Let me show you the, the hallways to look at that. Beautiful. Look at the lights. 
This is a high class hotel, friends. It really, really is. And look at the bedroom. Let's take a look at the bedroom. That's a nice place to sleep, right? Well, I hope you can make it up here to Boston. I really, really do because we're going to have such a good time, a real good time. And it's going to be August 1st, 2nd, and 3rd of 2025. So you have a long time still to, to look forward to it and to save up and to be able to come up here to Boston. And you can make it your vacation. There's so many things that you can do up here in Boston. If you never came to Boston, you will love it up here. This is where the Revolutionary War started. Why do you get to see some of the high education centers like Harvard and MIT? Oh, there's so much. We have an aquarium. We have a museum. Then, of course, about 100 miles north from here, we have beautiful mountain ranges in New Hampshire. We have Cape Cod. We have Martha's Vineyard. we got a beautiful place, and we hope that you guys can make it up here because I know that you will really enjoy. Try, try to make it your vacation. Bring the kids with you, and we'll have a, a room where they'll be able to meet with other kids and be supervised. But we're looking forward to this all happening, and it's going to happen August 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. Now, that'll be in 2025, not 2024. So, But uh, we're, don't go book the rooms yet. Uh, they, uh, they're they dealing with corporate right now. Uh, we're planning on at least 100 rooms. They have 220 rooms, but we're planning on 100 rooms being booked. So they're going to give us a discount. They're, trying to, they're getting a hold of the corporate people at the Hilton chain. And so we'll know, we'll know exactly. Uh, what it's going to cost, and it's going to be a really good price. They're giving us a good price, so we're looking forward to everyone coming up. And uh, you, you got you got well over a year to plan for it. Uh, Gilbert, did you want to say something? Well, I wanted to ask you: Is there going to be a public speaker, or is someone going to be uh, giving the keynote address to this? Uh... Oh yeah, no, we, we're going to have this. This is going to be a three-day convention, Gilbert. We're going to have a, a meet and greet on Friday. Now, all day Friday, all the people that are coming in, they're going to get their moment to speak into the mic and be on, well, we're going to live stream the whole event. But the people coming in will, will have a chance to speak up and how they left the watchtower, why they left the watchtower. They'll all, ha all have time to do that. Even if it takes all day, we'll do it. We're expecting upwards of 500 people plus. So it's, it's going to be a good time. So we're getting already. I have 181, 182 people that kind of com committed themselves they want to come now you know if you if you like to come to the game then the tickets are free i'll send you tickets now a lot of people have asked for the tickets i haven't sent them out yet because i didn't have the date now i have a date so you'll be getting tickets here in the next week you'll be hearing from me those that that wrote to me you think you might be able to make it gilbert well if, if i was like a, if i was like a keynote address speaker or here's a public talk you know then i'd feel a little special just kidding. Because, you know, when the, as Jehovah's Witness elders, you know, everybody wants to give the, the Sunday talk. Everybody wants to give the, the drama thing, you know. So that was like a little inside joke. For the well, elders. yeah, but I don't look at it. Uh, no, no, you're, yeah. you're definitely, you're going to really, you, you come up here and you'll have a talk. We're going to have, it's going to be a three-day convention. Wow. Oh, no, seriously. We, we have a lot of these people, people who call in six screens, the, the, uh, the moderators on the six screens, the, the hosts. Uh, they'll have a talk. But we're trying to get some big-name apostates now. Whether we can, <coughs> excuse me, whether we can do it or not, I'm not sure. But we're trying to get, now, friends, don't say that I said they're coming. I'm just telling you who we're trying to get. Now that I have the date, we're going to be able to get some good people that come up here that have been really exposing the watchtower for many years uh, we, we we hope to get uh well for starters i mean who i'm really going to go after and I'll, I'll do everything we can to get him here i'll help pay his way and everything is paul grundy and if paul's listening to this broadcast paul if you could come up here and i know he just got married recently but paul grundy is the is the webmaster the web host of um, JW Facts. I mean, that is the best website about Jehovah's Witnesses. So yeah, uh, we did that. We did, we did that website uh, uh, in the airplane that flew over San Diego Convention. And you know what? I'm glad you said that because I'm going to reach out to a JW Fairy Tale, and because JW Fairy Tale, it, it, you know, we all come from different cultures, but in the culture that I grew up in, 
even though I agree with you on J.W. Fax, he's one of the greatest apostates. But in my little world, uh, I love what J.W. Fairytale did to the apostate community. You know, he really made people think. He wasn't trying to convince you of this or that, but he really made the wheels in the brain turn. And when I was a Jehovah's Witness listening to him, even though he was dressed up in that crazy outfit, I knew everything he was saying was true. And I was like, I would bow my head when I would listen to him. So, yeah, you're right. There's a lot of great people that need to go and, and speak out. And uh, I'll try. I'll try to get well, him Rick, to, Rick, to come in. Rick, I want to bounce for Gilbert. I want to bounce for him. <laughs> I think he should be a speaker at your convention. <laughs> and I think he can do a five-minute talk as good as anybody. Well, well, well I exactly. Mean, he gets his opportunity as long as he doesn't go overtime. Okay, I don't want yeah. a five hundred two or five hundred four or heaven forbid five hundred six. I want yeah. it on time, but he can be the keynote speaker for the five minute talk. Yeah, yeah, and just just call me the again. keynote. It'll make me feel good. Well, it's in the off keynote talk. Can we give him yeah. the off keynote? There talk? you go. Please, Rick, yeah. please. Well, we have a we have a slot for him right right after bathroom break. Thank you. Yeah, right after okay. bathroom. Okay, there you go. <laughs> so, so, okay, I'll, I'll get to work and yeah, and I'll spread the word amongst the friends. Good. Well, thank you. No, in fact, we're we're trying to get. Like I say, don't hold me to it, but I want to get as many authors as we can. Uh, David Reed, uh, Don Cameron. Uh, we're going to try to get Peter Gregerson. Now, I know some of these people are getting older. Uh, James Penton, he's been on the six screens numerous times. But if we can't get them in person, we're at least going to bring them in via the Internet. But we're going to work as hard as we can to get as many people up here as we can. We hope to get Mike and Kimmy up here and as many people as possible. So we'll get to have a good time. And uh, now look at there's room for about 500 people. The main auditorium holds about 400. We have an overflow room of 100. If we go much over that, you know, I'm going to give out tickets for 500 people. But if we go over that, you might have to mill around and poke your head in the, the, the doorway once in a while. But there's a big lobby there, and we are going to have a great time. So by all means, uh, write me if you're interested in coming to the convention. Write me at jwworldnews at gmail.com. Now, I, you don't have to make a commitment, I mean, an ironclad commitment, but you can at least give me an idea of coming. Then I know exactly how to present everything and the seats and the arrangement and all of that. So if you think you're coming, let me know. I know things come up and sometimes you can't, but at least let me know and we'll get you in and get your ticket numbered so that you get a seat in the main auditorium. Well, I don't know what else I can say about it, but I'm excited. Now, no, I know I have something else to say. See, the Jehovah's Witnesses, they have a convention right up here in Lowell, Massachusetts. And the Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, because they have the convention here, there was some clash. The Hilton didn't want me to have at the same time the Witnesses were having the convention because they, many of the Witnesses stay at the Hilton. So they were holding off and giving me the first, second, and third of August because I believe it was the witnesses that wanted it. I believe it was, and they didn't really want to tell me, but they said, no, Rick, uh, well, 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 I went over Friday. I said, look, I have to give a date so I can announce it. I want to be able to announce it for my, uh, for my program. And they said, well, by 9 o'clock, if this other party doesn't come forth, and make themselves so clear that they want to rent it, then we're going to give it to you, Rick. So it looks like, it looks like I'm just thinking out loud here. We beat the watchtower to the punch. So that's good. First and second. First and second. Uh, and third of August. We're looking forward to it. All right. Let's listen to 609. 609, you there with us? Uh, Mr. Spearin, can you hear me? Yes, I, I can hear you. Who's this? Uh, this is a uh, longtime listener. And first time caller, so I want to know, do I get, is there any prize for me? Is there a prize for first time callers? Uh, there, there is a prize for first time callers. Yes, there is. Yes. I. Okay. Maybe the, <laughs> maybe the prize will be sometime down the future in the, in the great by and by, like so many religions these days, you know, that people follow, they work hard, they even 
suffer sometimes in, because of religion. And the religions have one thing in common. They always tell the people, oh, yes, you're going to get a, a reward, a surprise. That, and if you say, well, when? When will I get? It's, all, it's, always in the, it's always way in the great by and by. But uh, anyway, that's just a side point. This is, this is uh, Larry calling from way down here in uh, South Jersey. Uh, all the way up there to Boston. Uh, it's, a ple- it's a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, it's wonderful to talk to you. I'm, uh, I'm very, very uh, thankful for the good work you're doing. Um, <clears throat> very impressive. Uh, uh, I'm going to call you the 3D man. 3D man. You're determined, dedicated, and devoted in that order. So you are to be commended and complimented for such diligence uh, in what you're doing. I'm very thrilled that you, we're going to have this uh, XJ. It'll be like the, the very first one ever, XJW convention. And who knows the great potential that it'll have. So I'm thrilled. I'll be thrilled to attend. I'm thrilled that you're doing it. And, it's wonderful. And uh, I just wanted to ask you, uh, uh, and I have confidence in you, uh, that you're fully aware of the tremendous responsibility you have to pull this, to produce this thing and make it a big, big hit so people can really say, well, it was well worth the time and effort and money to attend, and that's the thing. Now, maybe you can refresh my mind just a little bit, some I'm just a little concerned about, so maybe you can reassure me. Uh, 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 the I'm going to use the word ballroom. If that's right. The the room or the ballroom in this Hilton up there in Boston. Do you? How do you feel about it? Do you think it's it's big enough? Do you think it's large enough? And I think you're throwing around a figure of 350 people. Am I right or wrong? Well, the people at the Hilton, they said we can get 350 in the main main auditorium, but they have an adjacent room, uh, a room right next to the auditorium. We can keep the doors open. We can also, I, I, I did consult with them just yesterday. They're going to allow us to put a big TV monitor there as well. So you'll be there with us, and, you know, you can, can kind of look at the auditorium. I wouldn't yeah. miss it for anything. Yeah. Good. Uh if I can, if I can just give a, a my honest opinion, I, I just have a sense or a feeling that that maybe that 350 room is maybe just too small, and here's why: because uh, just supposing, supposing now, of course nobody knows for sure the exact numbers, the exact figures, but just supposing 500 people show up, supposing a thousand people show up. See, you are going to use the word we. We can't have that. The, all these people have to be accommodated. So what? So do you think maybe it should be something bigger than that? And another reason why I say that is this. Well, let me ask you this question. How, how many uh, JWs are there in the whole wide world? Now, I think that figure is like eight and a half million, according to them. That's what they say. Is that, is that is that your understanding? Yeah. In fact, it's very close, according to what they say, uh, 9 million oh. witnesses, Larry. Okay. All right. Let's say, okay, 9 million. Now, let me ask the next question. How many XJWs are in the world and more specifically in the United States? Well, studies have been made. It uh, would be impossible to really hit the target on that. But uh, being in the business here for 20 years and talking to so many people and people sending me information, uh, we're all pretty, those that have given me information, we're all pretty much in agreement. Uh, there's about 14 million ex-Jehovah's Witnesses. But, so, like, 9 million current Jehovah's Witnesses and 14 million ex-JWs. Is that what you're saying? Ah, uh, that 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 is what I'm saying. Yeah, that is. Uh, but but now, but bear in mind, Larry, all of these ex Jehovah's Witnesses are not activists. 
that they could, they don't really care about, you know, coming to a convention. I mean, there's a lot of people that would, but there's many that just, uh, you know, they're just, they, they, they leave the watchtower and they say, I, I'm, I'm done with it. I don't want to even think about it, but there's a lot that aren't, you know. Nevertheless, that, that huge big figure uh, holds a great potentiality. So because that the number of XJWs is so huge, this tells me that so many more will want to come to this, uh, this XJW convention, and especially if, uh, if you take extra measures, you know, to get the word out and you, it's known, it'll be known as an official XJW convention. Maybe, just maybe, lots and lots of people will come, 500 to 1,000. It's just a feeling I have. Uh, no one knows for sure. But uh, well, let me ask you this. If you, if you had your druthers, if you had your druthers, would you prefer that, that, that 400 people come or would you prefer that 1,000 people come? Well, I mean, I would prefer 1,000. Now, you know, we, we have looked at bigger arenas, but here's what I think, Larry. You know, so, I mean, because I've done this before. I've had people want to come to my protest and protest with me, and they were going to come. But when the day came to protest, you know, they had to watch their mother's sick cat or they had a, some other excuse. So, uh, you know, I, I would rather have a, a venue where it looks packed, where you know, for regular Jehovah's Witnesses and even the Watchtower, if they see this, they're going to go, look at this place. It's packed. So, but, you know, if we had a big arena with a bunch of empty seats, we'd look just like the Jehovah's Witnesses. It looked terrible. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So, I mean, to that end, since your preference is really for the more the better, I have, well, I have a number of different suggestions, but just, just let me hit two. And these are just, these are just perspective things that maybe could be done maybe in the last six months before this convention occurs. Number one, and maybe, maybe you've already done it or you've already thought, thought about these things. Notify, somehow notify all the other YouTubers, the, the, all the other XJW YouTubers that are out there. And, you know, there's a whole, a whole bunch of them. Uh, maybe a dozen or so or ten, and just ask them if they now, depending on how friendly they are or not, and so on. But maybe you could just ask them to be sure to mention this thing on their YouTube programs and YouTube channels, and they'd mention it over and over again. And, uh, and maybe they'll just do it voluntarily or on their own, or maybe say, "Hey, I'll, I'll pay you. I'll pay you one hundred dollars if you." Uh, 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 mention it on four different programs. See, that would spread the word so much and people would be far more aware. The second thing, which maybe it's a, uh, wait, let me get, to, maybe it's, um, uh, uh, maybe this idea might work. Maybe it's way out there. Let's say maybe uh, two months before the event, the, um, the convention producer would actually say rent one big billboard somewhere in the United States, a lot of people will see it. It'll be out, it'll be out there. If, if you are an XJW, call this number. Something, something to that effect. You know, it would get the word out there and really boost up the numbers. So what do you think of those perspectives? Oh, I think, I think it's wonderful. Of course, it all takes uh, you know money to do that, and we're going to do everything we possibly can to advertise it and push it and get some high-profile people here. Because that's what's really going to make it. We have to, you're right, Larry, we have to hit a home run. This cannot be a mundane, boring, I, I want people hitting their head on the doorpost on the way out. I want them saying, wow, wow, I, I, I'm, I'm going to come back. I hope, I, I hope they have this again next year. And then we'll just keep upping the ante. We'll just get bigger venues. But see, this is the first one, so it's, it's a trial run, you know? Right. And another little suggestion that's been running around in my head here, uh, that is to exactly exactly what kind of speakers, or what, what exactly what kind of materials, or what kind of features would would these prospective attendees really like to hear and see? 
Now, to that end, maybe, just maybe, it would be a good idea if you, on your uh, podcast, say each each person that calls in to you, to your program, just ask them, by the way, do you, do you have any preference? Do you have any idea as to what speakers, material, or features you'd like to see at the convention? Maybe some people might say, yeah, I'd, it would be really worth my while if you would put on top-notch Bible scholars, men who have Ph.D. degrees, well, well, wait, wait, let me let me let me stop you right there, Larry. Larry, that this can't is this is not a Christian convention. I, I appreciate right. I, I appreciate what you're saying, but I, I I don't want the people to believe that they're going to come and be preached to. We're we're going to leave. Right. We're not going to do that. We're, we're not going to do okay. that because I mean I know it works. It, it, that that doesn't work, and I and I'm going to tell the people no because already online people say, yeah, you go to Rick's convention, he's going to preach to you. There'll be no preaching. We might have to have some talks on why yeah. Watchtower is wrong biblically, but it's not going to be a preaching yeah. session, you know. No, exactly. Well, I had my certain scholars that would uh, speak yeah. about the Bible and. So on and yeah, well, not, we're not going to we're not going to do that. Even 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 mention okay. it, even mention that on here right now is scaring people. We're, we're not going to do okay. that, Larry. Or, we're not going to do it. Or yeah, or you could ask him. Or hey, we want to see all X J W yeah. speakers. Yeah, hold on, hold on. Maybe keep a little tally. Yeah. see what people's preference are. Yeah, that might be a little bit helpful. All right, so. Yeah, well, Larry, no, we're gonna. Well, I'm gonna ask. We're, we're trying. What I'm trying to do is get some high profile. In other words, don't don't take this to the bank and cash it. But I just found out yesterday that we have the dates reserved. First, second, third, August 2025. It's a year. That's great. So it's a, let's see, we have today is, well, it's April, May, June, July. We're, 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 we're a year and four months out. For we'll give people a chance to save a little bit of money. And if you even booked an airplane, if, if, if you booked a flight, you could save some money even right now. But in, anyways, Larry, it's... Uh, it, 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 I'm, I'm glad to hear from you. My goodness, thank you. You, you kind of got me excited here. I really appreciate you calling in here tonight. Yeah. Uh, well, let, let me leave you with this. This is uh, tell tell your listeners that uh, it's a very very special thing to be an XJW. And although so many people can say, "Well, it's miserable experience. This fellowship uh, shunned, uh, lost all my family and friends." So you know what I say? I say, take the lemons and make lemonade. In other words, uh, um, you know, it's like this passage in the scripture that says about, oh, you're going through the fire. They're refined in the fire. They're like pure gold and so on. So it can, it can make you a better person. And remember this. So you're, it's kind of, I hate to use the word brotherhood, but you're in a special community with XJWs if you come to this convention. How so? You can meet you can meet all your fellow XJW people. You have something in common tremendously. Could be some business opportunities, opportunities to make lifelong friends, to learn from others that are just like you. So so that would be a big incentive to come up there to to, to this convention. To meet other people, it's just like the well, we're, well, we're going to try to, Larry. We're going to get to the point here, but we're going to we're going to try to we're going to try to do that. We're going to try to do that. Uh, we get some other callers that want to speak up, but no, we're going to try to do that, Larry. And we're going to try to make it. We're going to try to make it the best we can. Yeah. I'll leave you. I'll leave you with this. It's just like the Marines. What do they say about the Marines? Once a Marine, always a Marine. And so they have a bond, a connection, uh, similar to the Masons. You know, once you're a Mason, you have a secret handshake. You always identify with a fellow Mason. See, this is the way it could be with the great, great people that are XJWs. Well, it's quite a community, and we all have been touched by the tentacles of the Watchtower, Larry. So uh, it, it's going to be great. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I know y'all looking forward. I, I hope you're going to come up and, and be here. I think you are. You seem to be excited about it. So that's good, Larry. Yes. Yeah. I Hello. Will. All right. All, all the best to you, Mr. Barron. I'm sorry, Larry. All the best to you. Well, thank you, Larry. Thank you for chiming in and, 
giving us your update. Let, let's go. We do have, uh, it looks like before we bring Larry John Wayne on, let's go to 520. 520, you're on with us. Oh, is that me? I oh, didn't. Hey, I did. Rick, it's me, Smurf Girl. Yeah. I just wanted to tell you thank you from the bottom of my heart. People need to know I got justice in a major way. And it was because of you, Rick. Like the vid, the interviews that I did on six screens. Yeah. Um, with the outcome of my uncle Brent's trial in court, it never went to trial. He took a plea bargain, but they were using the six screens and my YouTube to with his death penalty case, and it became such an outcome that just recently. My little cousin Ty that survived the triple homicide, he got put in the custody of my Aunt Jessica's New York Jehovah's Witness family. And sadly, within weeks of them getting him, they re-abused him. And I had to talk to CPS and they had to get their mental health records um, seized. You know, they like requested their their mental disease, mentally diseased Jehovah's Witnesses, and they took Ty, put him on an airplane, and adopted him out to a stranger family, and none of those Jehovah's Witnesses can see him until he's over the age 18. Wow, so that's, uh, well, that's kind of good, right? Oh, it's amazing. I can't see him either, but as long as he's away from those Jehovah's Witnesses, but also the weird, because I was until Ty was safe, I didn't feel safe saying anything because I didn't want her to to do anything crazy, because um, she was doing some things crazy. But uh, they're they're in the media. My Jehovah's Witness side of the family, the New York ones, are in the media talking. The ones that are related to Jessica, and um. They have been complaining about the outcome of Brent's death penalty case because he took a plea bargain and got life in prison. They're unhappy, guys, in the media because New York Jehovah's Witnesses didn't get the justice they wanted in court. And so I said to them, I'm like, well, now you welcome to our world. Jehovah's Witnesses, welcome to our world, because the reason why they didn't get justice in court is because our recordings, me with you, Rick, and me on my YouTube channel, was almost got my Uncle Brett off, because he was pleading not guilty due to insanity. He almost got off because they were lying to the cops, they were lying in court, and they were even making the judge insane, and he's like... <laughs> It was the most poignant thing ever. So now they know how it feels not to get justice in court. And I feel good about that. Right. Well, just, just, just uh, in, in, in within a minute, just, just, just tell people, because maybe there's people listening that don't know that whole story, but just, just give a little synopsis okay. about what that was about. So they get it because it was terrible. Yeah. One of my abusers, my uncle Brent went nuts on another one of my abusers. My uncle Clyde. On my dad, my dad, and my dad and my uncles, the ones I've been talking about the whole time on your channel, my father and my uncle. Um, my uncle Brent beat my uncle Clyde to death in the head with a baseball bat 18 times while laying in bed with Ty. And, and, uh, remember how I used to say of how I, in, in several times, I'm sure, at least once I've said it, that my dad would leave the door unlocked for my abusers to come in the house and abuse me to let Uncle Brent and Uncle Clyde. Clyde left the door unlocked for Brent, for Ty. And instead of coming in and molesting, he beat Clyde while he was laying in bed with Ty. And I can only imagine why. So I have no, no love lost there. But then Jessica, nine months pregnant, my Aunt Jessica got chopped 130 times with that machete. And Ty was covered in blood for four days. He and obviously, even by accident, his little almost three-year-old self putting his fingers in his mouth with no food or water for four days with the dead body. He ingested, you know, blood and flesh. 
getting chopped up 130 times and laying in, you know. So, I mean, it was severe. Well, was so well, severe. well, I have to, I have to. The death penalty. That, that's terrible what happened. Now, I know that even YouTube was questioning you and, you know, not really allowing you to state these things. They had issues with it. But, I mean, I believe you 100%. It was all over the news. All people have to do is just punch it and they yeah. can see it. So you're a real trooper. Yeah, and Jessica's, yeah, and Jessica's sister, who I spoke to on the phone, Jasmine King, my YouTube channel, I can't. It's already shut down. I can't upload anymore. So, like in five days, it'll it's over. Like my YouTube channel's over. So I I'm doing it on Facebook and uh, Patreon, but I'm just putting it for free, you know. Yeah. And and certain things that I don't want because she's she they are watching my YouTube. The elders that I chewed out at the memorial, and I'm like, you're you know. Yeah. Well, well, like, no, well, know, no, like, it was terrible. It was terrible. But maybe what we'll do is we'll yeah. we'll try to get you up here for the convention. You can tell the whole story. But uh, no, no, I appreciate you coming on and yeah, and then telling what's happening. And I, I, I thank you very much for for, for coming in and I appreciate the accolades too. I really do. Well, thank you, Rick. Because seriously, Rick, if you had, if I had not had you to go to. To talk about that kind of baseball bat machete kinds of horror ahead of time, where I'm saying, yeah, he they left my dad would leave the door unlocked, and then the same thing happens with Clyde. That was such huge evidence. You need to know exactly how important you you were very important in Brent's death penalty case. Very important. Well, I didn't realize that. Well, thank you. My life, and I got closure. Well, thank you. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, I, I don't have to worry about those abusers anymore. I don't have to because of you. It took it. It took what four years for me to get justice. Just four years. Wow. It doesn't. It doesn't take that long if you get the right people like you. Well, uh, thank you. Well, you. you're you're a lady and a half. <laughs> don't you ever give up. You're a good woman. Don't you ever change. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Love everybody. We love you Talk too. To you later. Thank you. Well, there you go. My goodness gracious, all these things that are happening behind the curtains of the Watchtower. Well, who'd like to speak Hello, up? Hello, Rick. Uh, yes. Hello, Fran. Hello. Hi, Rick. Yeah, we're enjoying the program. I didn't know if you had a theme going, but we kind of caught you talking about the uh, XJW convention next year. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we definitely want to be there. Um, we know just from the... Uh, protest that was in Washington, D.C. when we were all there, they had, they had 200 people, and that was, we thought, you know, that that's going to be bigger. That was nothing, and 200 people showed up. So I think you're going to at least get 500 people. I wouldn't be surprised if there were more. And Joe and I have been traveling around. We uh, came back from an East Coast trip. We went all the way down to Louisiana, and we met up with over, I don't know, 60 people, and we had 13 meetups, went to 12 states, and so I think we're going to have, oh, we were just in Massachusetts last weekend, we would have invited you, but it was on a Saturday, and we had 19 people just in uh, someone's home, so I think between now and then, we're going to have at least 500 people, so we're looking forward to it, and um the biggest thing we're looking forward to is just meeting the people. Oh, yeah. No, in fact, it's, I, I can't believe it. It's overwhelming. Uh, you know, that's what gave me the impetus of the idea is that protest down in Washington, D.C. When I saw 200, I, I counted 223, 224. It was hard to tell because yeah. some people weren't participating in it. They, they, they felt kind of awkward about it. But I counted mm -hmm. about 224. Three, twenty-four people. So I said, "Gee, I, I got thinking when I left. I'm driving home, and I'm saying, wow, you know, that's a protest. People, people don't generally want to protest, but maybe they'd like to have a convention or get together with a yeah. big arena. So, boy, I just put it out on the six screens one night, and I got oh, all these good. people emailing yeah. me. So it's yeah. it's a good thing, and and I, I'm looking forward yeah. to it too. So we all have time to plan. It's like." You know, it's like a year yeah, and four yeah. months out, so we got plenty of time, you know? Yeah, yeah. And as far as talks and everything go, I mean, we're not really 
you know, interested in any religious talks ourselves. I mean, the biggest thing that we're looking forward to is the, the meetups with the folks. And even if people break off into small groups and meet up, I, I think that's great. And I, I think it'll be very organic. I, I really do, because any of our meetups, that's the way they've been. They really have. Oh yeah, no, there's not going to be. There's going to be no, like I just told the caller earlier. Right. There, there, there's no, yeah. there, there's no Christian flavor to this. Right. No. Now you might yeah. hear a talk on maybe some of the falsehoods of the Watchtower and their teachings because it's part of the, the whole idea. But there's no, there's going to be no preaching or trying to teach yeah. somebody. It's, it's not going to be that. It's going to be, it's going to yeah. be all we're trying. You guys will have a talk too. All those people who participate in the six screen, so you guys will have a talk mm -hmm. too, and you'll be able to get up there and tell your story. We're going to have testimonies. Yeah. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to, now, you know, I don't want to tell people, well, they're coming. But I'm not saying that, folks. I'm saying I'm trying to get. Who I'm really trying to get is uh, I'd like to get Erwin Zalkin. You know, he he's the attorney that is helping so many witnesses with the child sexual abuse case. Mm -hmm. I'd love to get him yeah. here. I'd love to get a number of authors here. You know, some mm -hmm. people that have really made a difference in helping people get out of the watchtower. So that's what I'm working right. on now that I have the dates. But how do how, how could I call people before and say, hey, can you come to the convention? Well, when is it, Rick? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, geez, yeah. you have to have something together, you know. Right, right, yeah. Well, I'm sure the word will get out there. And, you know, the word, the best you can do is just um, invite them. And you never know who's going to show up. And especially since you've got all the time now, people can plan their schedules. they got plenty of time to do it. And uh, we're, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited. I'm so excited, uh, Fran, because... You know, you guys, you guys get excited too when you meet people and oh, look. At, we love it. I'm telling you, Rick. We went, we went all along the East Coast, all the way down to South Carolina, then over to Georgia, and then we went as far as Louisiana. We would have stayed longer, but Joe's mom passed away while we were on our trip, so we had to head back home earlier. But um, then we did end up finishing up in Massachusetts, like I said last weekend. So that that was good. It was we really appreciated all the friends that we met, and we're looking forward to meeting more. Well, you guys are really a legend out there. You're doing something that's very different, and we love you guys. And I'm I'm sorry well, to hear you know, I'm, I'm sorry to hear about Joe's oh, mother too, Joe. I'm sorry to hear about oh, yeah. that that well, stuff. Yeah, he lived a good long life. Yep. She was 97. Towards the end, she was failing, and yeah, you know, she it wasn't a life. You know, we were glad that the suffering was over. And, you know, that she is at peace. So we're glad for that. But thank you, Rick. We appreciate it. Well, that. I mean, one other thing. sure, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, no, one other thing unrelated, but today we got a text message from one of our good friends that we had when we were in the organization. Was that? Yeah, previous. Yeah, she was a good friend previous, but since we disassociated, they no longer talked to us. Anyway, we had to drop something off at our daughter's yesterday. It was a, a gift, and it, and she's the landlord. So she wrote us this really interesting text, and she said, I'm only going to tell you this once, and she put that all in caps. Do not ever try to contact me or her daughter, again, via mail, text, or in person, as you have tried many times. We have nothing to say to you nor do we want anything to do with you or your husband. Also, stay off our property, which would include the rental property as well, or you'll be hearing from the New York State troopers. This is considered harassment, as I was told, and I absolutely will press charges. Now, this is someone that we were very close with, and so anyway, she, <laughs> so she wants to press charges for harassment and the witnesses are the ones that go and harass people at their door and on the phone so we just got to chuckle out of it and you know what are you going to do oh my but goodness anyway, that that, that is so mean fran that that oh, geez well why you, know. you know why you know look at we're all on planet earth together even if the witnesses <laughs> have a different ideology why why do they have to be so mean and ugly you know jeez oh, you know i, I know i yes. know 
well, they think that we're beaten. They think that we're like demons just because we spoke out against child sexual abuse. Can yeah. you imagine? Oh, sure. Speaking out about that and yeah. demonize us, and they say we're apostates. Terrible. Mm -hmm. But we love you, Fran. Yeah, we love you and Joe. Well, we love you too. Well, keep love cranking you, away Joe. at it. Yeah. We thank you very much thank for calling. You, Th thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And we'll be listening. Okay. okay love you. Thank you. Uh, is that Bye. Dick Borgie out there? I think it is. Nine seven eight. That's Dick, I think. Yeah. You got it, Rick. Yeah. Good evening, everybody. Rick, allow me to make a suggestion to the audience. We are seventeen months or so uh, to the convention, and I would suggest to the audience that whatever mode of transportation you're going to take to get to Tewksbury, Mass, whatever the price is, just divide it by. Uh, the 17 months, and, you'll, and then put that money in an envelope uh, for the convention so you'll have it. And also, I would say maybe put $1,000 aside for the uh, hotels for the three nights. It won't cost that much, but you're probably going to need some money for, for meals and so forth, or incidentals. So I would suggest to the audience, start planning now. And start planning to tell people and um, God bless you all. And we'll, we'll, me and Connie are looking forward to seeing you all up in uh, Tewksbury, Massachusetts. Well, Dick, well, Dick, it sounds great. And then you're absolutely right with that. Now, look at it. The thing is, now I have to tell you, uh, they're working on a really good price for us. Uh, we have 100 rooms blocked, which means I, I think we're going to get 100 rooms. Now, the price, I, I don't know. They're going to let me know next week. But it seems like the price is going to be in the $150 range per night. Now, I have to tell you, the food is expensive. I, I walked through the breakfast bar the other day and just checking things out. So their breakfast is like 18 bucks. I mean, I, I wouldn't spend 18 bucks for breakfast, to be honest with you. But right down, you can walk. It is walking distance of Wendy's, McDonald's. Uh, there's a Circle K, a Dunkin' Donuts. You can walk there. So you don't have to, you know, spend $18 for breakfast. So it's, it's that's what I took into consideration when I booked this place. Can people eat outside? There's plenty of places to eat. And if you like something more upscale, there's a, there's a steakhouse. So, you know, it's really a, a nice little area. So in walking distance, there's plenty of food. So you don't have to eat there because it, it would be expensive. But the rooms are just beautiful, beautiful. Now, right now, I checked the price right now, and you can get a room at the Hilton right here, that Hilton Garden outside of Boston for 107 bucks a night. Now, that's cheap. You, you can't even stay at the Motel 8 for that. The Motel 8 is wanting, I believe, right now about 120 bucks a night. So they're trying to get business, but they're new. But that won't be the case in the summer of 2025. That's when people travel around. That's when people come to New England. So just bear that in mind. So I'm figuring, I'm just figuring, don't hold me to it, but I'm figuring about 150 Maybe even 140. See, I'd say 140 to 170 bucks in that area. So it's not real cheap, but let me tell you something. It's a nice hotel. It's a nice hotel. Thank you, Dick. Thank you. Well, my goodness, we're looking so forward to that, right? Boy, I'll tell you. Well, let's get into the news. Let's take a look and see Rick. what. Uh, yes. Hi, this is Debbie Moore. Um, I just wanted to mention the brother that was on earlier uh, in New Zealand. We're talking about, you know, abuse, you know, by the Watchtower Society and the, the governing body and everything. And uh, there's a really good book available called The Subtle Power of Spiritual Abuse by David Johnston and, well, and some of his associates. But it, it really delves into what what happens with the mindset of someone who's been in uh, religion, cult, or whatever you want to call it, like we have been. And I just wanted to make that suggestion about that book. And one other thing, that a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses think that the XJW community is mentally diseased 
and we're demons and we have no love for each other. We hate everybody and everything. And Joe and Fran <clears throat> have had a show that's come from Six Springs now through Fixing My Face. And this past Wednesday on their show, Joe and Fran mentioned that I needed a lift chair and I don't have the money to buy one. And before the night was even over, they had raised enough money to help me with a lift chair. And I cannot think of a single time in my life that the witnesses threw in together for a person in, I mean, that I can remember for a person who really needed something like that because of being handicapped or something. But yet, in less than two hours, they had enough money to buy and order one through Amazon that would suit my needs. You know, one that could lift me up and lay me down and, you know, that is very neat, much needed because I don't really have any furniture. And then the, the swivel worker I did have, I fell the night before it turned out and got hurt quite a bit. But anyway, I just want to say if you're a Jehovah's Witness and you're out there listening, this community has unconditional love. They saw a need. The, the, the brothers and sisters of the XJW community saw a genuine need for a sister who's handicapped and been over backwards to help me out. And I just, I'm so happy. And I just think it, it, it just shows. And the only way these people even know me is because I, I, you know, been on, on the show with Brandon and Joe, and I'm in the chat a lot, and I talk to lots of people. But, I mean, I don't know. I just thought it was something really special, and I wanted it to mention it on Six Springs because it's something truly loving, and nobody expects anything back, although they do get my love, you know, um, and hugs. Anyway, I just wanted to mention. Well, 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 Debbie, that's great. I mean, the community really is generous and nice, and I'm I'm glad you you got some help with that. That that that's wonderful. That that's a wonderful thing, and and it made your day, didn't it, Debbie? It made your day. Oh, uh, it, it made it made way more. It made like hundreds of thousands of days for me because it was a genuine need. I I can't hardly stand up. I cannot walk, and I'm not getting stronger. You know, I'm trying, but you know, you can only do so much. We have imperfect bodies on this earth and you know, we just we have to hang on as long as we can, the best we can. And honestly, I, since I lost everything, all I had was a little rocking chair and a bed and, and a bed for furniture. And I just and I've got a wheelchair, of course, electric wheelchair, but and, and the little rocker I got is a swivel rocker, and it swivels when I tried to transfer from my wheelchair to the. Well, there you go, boy. Rocker. Well, I'll tell you. Well, well, I'm glad you. I'm, I'm glad you like it, and I want to thank Fran and Joe. The, these guys are remarkable. They are remarkable. That they, they they are helping so many people. They are putting the ex witness, uh, ex witness community together. Uh, they're doing a great job. Everyone loves Fran and Joe, Debbie. And they're very generous. All the all the XJW community, so many are so generous. And I, all of my friends I have now are in the XJW community. And thank you, Rick and Susan, for everything y'all do because none of all, any of this would have happened if not for you. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you very much. And well, for all of us as a team. It's a, that's how I look at it here at the six screens. It's a team. We have a number of programs. We have different hosts. They all work hard at it. All of us working together are making it all happen in the X witness world. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you. All right. So before we bring on, we have a, uh, yeah, we, I mean, let me just make a comment. We do have a woman coming on from Australia. Uh, Cameron, you hang on with us. We'll bring you on in just a couple of minutes. Uh, okay, go ahead. You're on with us. Go ahead, sir. Hello, this is Russell from Saskatchewan, and I just wanted to say thank you, Rick, for all that you do. It's, uh, you know, I do believe that God's Spirit's on you, and I think you guys are all 
uh, all you XJW activists are going in the right direction. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's wonderful to hear this. I, I don't always comment, but I, I'm listening to the show most of the time. And I think it's wonderful. You get all these people on there and their experience and, and it, it's a really good thing you're doing. And, uh, and may God keep blessing you and your hard work. And, and I wish I could come to that convention, but I don't know. <laughs> finances way way from here out in Saskatchewan but uh I just wanted to let you know Rick that uh you know you're gonna you're getting more people behind you because you're doing the right thing and you got God's spirit on you God bless Rick oh thank you no I appreciate that but you know if you can't come don't you worry about it uh every single moment of that convention is going to be on the internet it'll be on YouTube oh awesome yeah, it'll be on my Facebook page. So if you can't come, don't don't worry about it. I know it's expensive. Things today are very expensive. But don't you worry about it. It'll be all live streamed. And we'll be even, hopefully, we'll have a telephone line set up as well. So if people want to call in and ask questions, uh, we're going to make it very interactive. So don't worry. We're, we're, already, we're already working on the technical aspects of it. So we're going to have, we hopefully, it'll go, it'll go over flawlessly. Thank you, brother. Thank you for calling in. And th thank you for the comments. I appreciate that. Okay, so, all right. So there we have it. My friends, things are happening. Well, what I want to do, though, is, you know, in Norway, we know that the charity status has been removed from the Watchtower. We know in Europe, uh, the Watchtower gets money from different countries because of being a religion. And that's how it works in Europe. Uh, religions get money from the government for charity, and they're supposed to take that charity uh, that they get from the government, and they're supposed to disperse it among the members of the religion. Watchtower doesn't do that. Well, we have a woman coming on right now. Her name is Karen Sanders, or Saunders, and uh, we're going to bring her on right now. So let's bring her on. Let's add her on the stage here. Hello, Karen. Hey, Rick. How are you going? Hello, everybody. Well, Cameron, I'm glad I'm glad you made it all the way from Australia. We just <laughs> a previous program we had someone coming on from uh, New Zealand. But anyways, Cameron, we're so pleased that you are really becoming quite the activist. You want to continue to let people know about the watchtower. So give us a little rundown on what you're trying to do here, Cameron. Okay, Rick. Well, <clears throat> First of all, thank you for allowing me to come onto your show. I find it it's a great privilege to be able to uh, be here and to talk to everybody. And just carrying on from what you said about um, the Norway charity status being revoked. Um, just over a week ago, I decided to start a petition through change.org to actually carry that further and see if we can actually revoke the worldwide charity status of Jehovah's Witnesses. And to date, I was just looking on the, um, the progress. We've got, since last week, we've got 800 um, petitioners that have signed and we've just received um, our first video petition too so if anybody wants to um, put their name and face to a video petition and upload that onto the chart to the um, the revoking the worldwide charity of Jehovah's Witnesses please go ahead and do that I mean I'm just I'm absolutely blown away by everybody that has signed this petition so far um, thank you everybody and we just want to grow this number and grow this voice so that we can carry on um, from Norway. Because let's be honest, um, the Jehovah's Witness organization now are under scrutiny all over the world and they've been put on notice. Well, hey, Karen, I, I want to ask a couple of questions here. Now, uh, in Europe, uh, unlike here in the United States, I'm not sure how it works in Australia where you are. But here in the United States, the witnesses don't get any money from the government. Uh, they have their own welfare program here. And so the witnesses, uh, but in Europe, the way the Europeans look at it is they'd rather give money to these religions like the Watchtower. And hopefully these religions would help some of the poor and people who need the money in, in their religion. Now, does, does that happen in Australia or no? <laughs> Um, it is a charity that it does have a charity status here in Australia. 
Um, but I was doing some research and there's over, I think there's over 1300 congregations um, that, you know, uh, all over the world um, that receive or are in countries where Jehovah's Witnesses have charity status. So, um, you know, it, it's quite, quite a lot to, to um, think about the amount of taxpayer funding uh, that actually goes to these um, congregations all over the world. So I didn't know that actually. I didn't know that America didn't give Jehovah's Witnesses charity status. So thank you for bringing that up. But I think um, there's enough information out there and, and people, you know, from just looking at some of the um, messages on this petition, everybody everybody just wants the tower to go to come down and go because um why should taxpayer taxpayer um funding go to an organization like jehovah's witnesses who have clearly and evidently shown that they abuse those um uh, taxpayers funding and you know they they don't do they're not a charity we all know that they're not a charity even though they claim to have charity status in many countries you are right though that they, they do tend to um, have some sway in europe with the charity funding from governments there um australia i think has got a good listening ear um you know when you think about the backdrop of the australian royal commission so you know i want to build it on top of that but as I speak to you now, I'm already trying to source um, entities, government entities, judicial entities, so that I can actually contact and email them to become decision makers for when this petition's ready to go. Yeah. So anyways, what I was thinking here, Cameron, is I, I, I forget how many countries there are in Europe. I, the last, uh, I think there's about 22. I'm not sure. But uh what would you want to suggest that all of these countries would stop giving charity status to the witnesses? Is that your proposal here? Absolutely. Um, the, the charity states, well, yeah, because also um, it's come to light that, you know, we, we the, 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 the Jehovah's Witness organization, they're not transparent. You know, they might have on their website that, you know, there's donations and, you know, there's the worldwide fund and disaster relief and all that. It looks they can sanitize anything they want on the on the website. But the reality is, is this, even though they say that they have donations spent on these things, which looks very noble, there's no breakdown. There's no breakdown of where donations and taxpayers funding actually goes. And yet all the time it's coming out more and more now that they are abusing their donations, whether that's internal um, congregation members' donations or tax funders' um, uh, money that goes to the charity. They're not proving or showing or being transparent in where that money actually goes. And when you think about all the lawsuits that are coming out, and have come out all over the world. And now, um, you know, I'm actually interviewing a gentleman on Tuesday who is actually an, still an active witness. He's not disfellowshipped, but he's writing to the governing body all the time and exposing them and why they are misusing uh, money that's given to them as a so-called charity. So that's going to be a very, very interesting interview. Um, he's actually got his own website um jwpsa and on there you can actually see pdf downloads and official documents of where jehovah's witnesses are spending their money in stocks and shares for example so yep. yeah this is why we want it revoked because they're not being transparent and they're certainly not a charity they don't behave like one well they don't uh, now i just googled in i was wrong with 22 countries i uh, it's 44 countries that are in Europe. So evidently the witnesses are getting money from 44 countries throughout mm -hmm. Europe. So we're going to stop that. So tell us, Sharon, what are we going to do? Do we have a link? Can you put a link up somewhere? Can uh, Should I use the link that you sent me on the six screens I'll put up on this YouTube? Yeah, that, that link, sorry, Rick. Yeah, that link actually goes directly to the petition. So if you click on that link, you can go in there, you can either upload a video and give a video petition, or you can sign it in there. 
Yeah. Well, that that is wonderful, Karen. You're doing a great work, and th thank you for wanting to expose the witnesses. And I'll put that up when YouTube uploads this video. I'll put that link up so people can connect with it and sign it. And uh, th thank you for for being a real activist. Thank you for wanting to get something done here because this organization has hurt too many people, Karen. Thank you for wanting to be with us. Oh, look, it, it's it's just been amazing. And I think because of my own experience as a Jehovah's Witness for 35 years, um, I was a regular pioneer as well. My husband was a ministerial servant, but we experienced emotional, phys uh, psychological and mental abuse from elders in different congregations. And, you know, just, just on that alone, that that I mean, the child sexual abuse is absolutely vile, but I'm sure everybody can resonate um, with the emotional abuse that, you know, is inflicted on innocent people all over the world in different congregations as well. And uh, yeah, I, I want to be I want to be a voice. I want to do my part. And I just want to thank everybody again, every single person that has um, that has signed this petition. And please, um, please continue to share the link. Please continue to, um, you know, speak about it. And let's get let's get this charity status worldwide. Let's get it revoked. Let's get it stopped once and for all. Well, good girl. Good girl. I really appreciate it, Karen. Don't you ever give in. Give up. Uh, uh, you're a wonderful lady. Don't you ever change. And we'll get you on here. One of these days, I want to hear your story. Uh, we don't yeah. have the time tonight, but I want to hear your story. So you, okay. stay, you stay in touch with me. I'd love to have That's you come cool. on and tell us your story. You're trapped in the watchtower. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Bye, everybody. Okay. Look to all. Bye. Thank you, Karen. Well, there you go. My goodness. Well, isn't that wonderful? Isn't it wonderful to have a woman come on and she's a real activist. We appreciate her. Well, let's see what's going on behind the curtains of the Watchtower. Uh, you know, the thing is, we, we do the news here every Saturday night. There are some things that, you know, People, and I want to thank everyone for sending me news articles uh, all day long. My phone's ringing off the hook. My Facebook ding, ding, messenger. Rick, talk about this, talk about that. I try to bring up some of the biggest stories that are going on behind the curtains. And, and some of the stories that can get people talking. Sometimes the stories that won't get people talking. But that's the most important thing we're trying to do here is get people talking about what's going on behind the curtains of the Watchtower. Well, you guys heard about the earthquake, right? A 4.8 earthquake hit New York, New Jersey area. Well, that happened this week. You you guys heard about it. Now, do you know what the fault line, the name of the fault line is that that earthquake happened on? I'll give you a couple of seconds to think about it. If someone knows, I mean, if someone could write us in or at least mentioned on YouTube chat or a call in, what was the fault line that the earthquake in New York was on in New Jersey that caused the earthquake? I, I didn't know it. I, I don't know if you know it either, but I'd be certainly give you, well, yeah, in fact, it was the Ramapo fault line. Well, that was Steve out there, Benoit. He's writing on, yeah, he hit it. So the earthquake fault line was Ramapo a uh, fault line. I never heard of that. I, I know Ramapo. I know the Watchtower has land there, Ramapo, but I never knew there was a fault line there. So Watchtower was at the point of constructing a movie film studio, a video studio. Let's go with that. Uh, within that area, right on the fault line. Yeah. Now we haven't heard much about that studio, but I'm thinking, my God, this thing was right on the fault line of an earthquake? Uh, I mean, did the Watchtower check any facts or any information such as topography regarding fault lines, sinkholes, infrastructures, and the like? Did, did, did Watchtower at least do a little investigating research here? Evidently not. I mean, a person would think that they would have made a thorough investigation in order to ensure the safety and the well-being and the welfare of their members, you know, building this, well, close to $500 million structure on the Ramapo fault line? Well, come on. I mean, come on, you guys. This is this is nuts stuff. Uh, 
Well, I, I guess they weren't really too concerned about it. This organization, and I, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir, I know, but this organization is not as intelligent as they make themselves out to be. I, I think you pretty much understand that, right? W would you would you buy a, a would would you buy? I, I think they paid eleven million dollars. Don't hold me to it. I, I don't have the figures right in front of me, but I think they paid eleven million dollars for this property in Ramapo. W would you buy property on a fault line of an earthquake? A major earthquake fault line. Uh, I, I wouldn't. I, I don't. I don't think you would either. But the Watchtower did. Uh, does someone really? Uh, is someone at the top really looking out for this organization or this organization out of control? I, I have to think it's out of control. Uh, I, I don't even know if they're going to forward with the building in Ramapo. I haven't heard much about it. Uh, and my own opinion is I think it's just a way to raise money. Well, we're building this Ramapo video center. We need your money. But nothing seemed to be happening up there. But I don't know what the watch that was thinking, building a building on a fault line. Uh, may maybe they hoped that they would be divinely protected. You know, Jehovah will help us. He won't make an earthquake happen in our neck of the woods. Uh, or maybe... They have hidden their sins, and they're being punished. So that that's a positive. It could go in two different directions, right? But I found that very fascinating. The Ramapo fault line. Boy, oh boy, I'll tell you, that, that was a 4.8. I mean, nothing, you know, no buildings were destroyed. But did this fault lines up here in New England. I know most people think of California. But up here in the Northeast, even though New York's not part of New England, but up here in the Northeast, at least there is fault lines, the Ramapo fault line, right there where the witnesses were going to build their movie studio. Unbelievable. Well, I, I want to bring that up tonight. I thought you might find that fascinating. I, I did. I, I kind of found that kind of fascinating. Uh, you know, I, I'm telling you, as, as I go through the news, every week people send me stuff, and I thank you for sending me all these news articles. But, but I have to tell you that every week, I get articles from people talking about kingdom halls that have been sold and they have been converted into a different church, whether it be Muslims, whether it be even, even Harry Krishna, whether it be Mormons, uh, they're buying up the Jehovah's Witness kingdom halls. Now, I was under the impression when I was one of Jehovah's Witnesses, and you guys too, weren't you under the impression that the Jehovah's Witnesses, the Watchtower that is, did not do business with Babylon the Great. Weren't, weren't you under that impression? I was. So, because I can remember, uh, you know, I was a businessman. I had a sign business. I still have it. And I remember that I wouldn't take signs from churches. At times, people would ask me, Rick, can you let our church bus, or can you do this for us? Can you make us a sign for the church? I would have to kind of bow away from that because I know that the Watchtower could really create issues. They could actually disfellowship you for getting involved with, uh, with uh, a church. You know, if you were a house painter, a carpenter, a plumber, uh, you were counseled. And uh, you were told that they would lose your privileges for doing business with Babylon the Great. That, that, that's what we were all told. But now, how is it? Now, this is like the same thing. How is it the governing body is actually selling their kingdom halls off and they're not considering it doing business with the world? How, how is it they can get away with it, but the average witness couldn't? I mean, does this make sense to you? I mean, can you connect with this? Uh, if you're a construction person or a person that's out there trying to make a living, you know darn well the Watchtower wouldn't let you deal with the church. But yet here they are selling all their churches off to uh, to Babylon the Great. Uh, you know, I, I can remember, too, uh, when I was living in Florida, they had a dedication of a kingdom hall. And I think most of the people listening to this broadcast tonight, I think most of you can remember when you had a dedication 
He had a new hall, and they were going to dedicate it to Jehovah. Do you remember that? So you dedicate the building to Jehovah, and then you sell it off to another religion. I mean, does something grab your attention here? Uh, so if you decide the building, if you, did, if you dedicate the building to Jehovah, and then you sell it off to another religion, uh, can you say that that dedication was revoked? I, I think in the purest sense of understanding, the dedication to Jehovah and the understanding that this was a Jeho it was Jehovah's house, I think that can now be revoked, take it off the table. How, how could it be that way? Then what about people uh, that have been, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses, and now they're, in fact, even me, my invitation has been revoked to go to the Natick Assembly Hall. So how is it that they can revoke the invitation for people, but they're also, that they should be revoked? In other words, when you dedicate a kingdom hall to Jehovah, then you sell it off to a business or another religion, that should be revoked. So that's just my thoughts on it. I don't, don't know what your thoughts are, but I like to hear it. Don't you think this is like, Tools to standards, you know, we we couldn't do business with Babylon the Great, but yet the Jehovah's Witness organization does business with Babylon the Great. I think that should really be something that really gets a person thinking. I mean, I, that that could knock a person out of the truth. I would think. Uh, go ahead, you're on with us. Nine oh six, Michigan, the Upper Peninsula uh, yes, of Michigan. Evening, yes, go ahead, Ken. Yeah, well, thanks for taking my call again, and good evening to every buddy in the six screens area there. Uh, nice being with you again. I, uh, it's nothing but a double set of standards and so forth and all that, you know. Uh, they've got the attitude, the Watchtower Society has the attitude that uh, they are going to worship God and nothing but God and so forth. And uh, we don't mean maybe. When the devil comes along and offers them money, they take it. They take it in a heartbeat. That's their attitude and so forth. So it's uh, yeah, it's all about the double standards they have, and it's all about the money and so forth. It's not, nothing about religious beliefs or anything like that and so forth. And uh, we were talking about Ramapo and that before, too. The, uh, the Watchtower Society doesn't care how they spend their money. They don't care how they waste their money because they get it from the taxpayers or from the people. Uh, you know, and so forth. And so then they can uh, they can just waste it away under the guise that it is going to go for the uh, work of, re of a religious society. But yeah, it's just uh, double standards all the way and so forth. And my sec second comment I wanted to make across, as soon as that I can find out how to sign that petition that's going to be going around, I'm going to do it definitely. And we definitely want to put a stop to the uh, money in the, that's going to be going into the Watchtower Society. We don't want them to waste any more money. We don't want them to uh, uh, get any more money to weaponize, you know, use it as weapons against the people and against the taxpayers. So the, uh, the abuse in the Watchtower Society has got to stop. Well, you said that really well, Ken. I really mean that. And and I have to tell you, too, that it's only now that the apostates are catching up with the Watchtower. We were start, we're starting to get points on the scoreboard. You know, for many years, we spoke in the wilderness. I've been out there for 20 years. 20 years ago was nothing. They wouldn't listen to the apostates for nothing. It wouldn't change anything. But today we have such a vast army of people that are coming out of the Watchtower. It's making a big difference, Ken. I'm telling you, we are looking at an organization that is sinking. And as I always say on the six screens, the monkey died, the circus is over. Ken, thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. I just want to make a comment on myself, too, that back in the 90s, when I first was confronted with this issue to do legal research, I was working in a library back then. When I was first confronted with this legal research, you know, for uh, my friend Bill here and all that, that only one and only documentary I ever made of an ex, 
witness or somebody that's been involved with him, to say the least. Uh, I was, I felt the same way, too. I was just nothing but a voice, you know, crying in the wilderness all alone, uh, wondering how this stuff is even going on. Or we, uh, I was getting more and more educated as the Constitution. We have a First Amendment with freedom of religion, but then we got a dictatorial uh, religion going around and enthralling people and telling them what to do, uh, even in their own homes or households, when they're taking care of, when they're maintaining the home and they're paying the taxes on it and everything like that, the watchtower wants to run you. Well, I don't know. That that kind of stuff's going to have this. That kind of stuff's going to come to an end. And I'm glad to see that it's coming to fruition now. Ken, you get the gold star. You're a good man. I always love hearing from you. You add a lot of uh, valuable information. Ken, don't you ever change. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. But there's going to be one exception. I will make changes for the better. You know, I'll make I'll make improvements as necessary. So, but other than that, no, I'm not going to change my ways. I'm going to be a constitutionalist always. Well, don't you ever change. Thank yeah. thank you very much, Ken. Yeah. Well, you're on six screens. Let's listen in. We got uh, we got. Uh, it looks like Thomas Hodgins. Thomas, what do you want to say? I was just going to ask Jim if you want to come that extra always witness convention. I mean, it's up to him, but he's sure invited if he'd like to come. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Thomas. I didn't get all of that. Go ahead, go ahead and say that again. I was just curious if Tim was thinking about possibly coming to that XJW convention in Massachusetts. In a year and a half. Well, well who's who was thinking of coming? I, I didn't get that. I was just wondering if Ken was thinking about maybe coming. Well, we're gonna what we're gonna do here. It's uh, ho hopefully if all goes well. I've been working hard trying to you know raise as much revenue as I can. I'm out busting my butt so to speak because I really this is meaningful. But I'm trying to raise money on my own by working hard to be able to get some people like Ken and others that we can help to get here. So that that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, I'm taking advantage of right now, a good, good business climate. So if all goes well, we can try to get Ken here with us. So thank you. Thank you, Ken. Uh, th thank you, Thomas. Yeah. Very, very commendable, Rick. I'm so proud of your generosity and your love for people that have been affected by the Watchtower. That, that really says a lot to me. Well, I'm glad you think that, Tom, because I, I, I have to tell you something. That this organization has hurt so many people, Thomas. And you know, I'm not I'm I'm not trying to over amplify it or embellish it. Everybody listening to this program knows the watchtower has really hurt a lot of families. But uh, Thomas, you've been a great follower of the six screens. You've been with us from day one. We appreciate your presence. You're a good man, Tom. We really mean that. Thank you. To make it there, Rick. I hope I can stay healthy and <laughs> Well, we, we hope that can happen. I'd love to meet you in person, Tom. I really would. Yeah, we've been wanting to. <laughs> yeah. It'd be nice, I'll tell you. Well, you would be, I'll tell you what, Thomas, you, you would be hitting your head on the doorpost on the way out. You would be so excited. You will, that this will be a, a life changing moment for you. Seriously, if you can make it. But if not, it's going to be on the internet. It'll be all over the internet. So, you know, don't worry if you can't make it. Uh, let's go to, okay, we got, let's go to 714. 714, you're on with us. Hi, Rick. It's Nadine calling. Oh, always good to hear from Nadine. You got a nice sounding way about you, Nadine. Oh, thank you, Rick. I just wanted to make like three different little comments. Um, the one about where they sell the kingdom halls to the churches. Um, well, remember how we couldn't go to a church to attend a funeral or a wedding. Say a relative got married and they were Catholic, like my sister-in-law, she's Catholic. So we could not go to a church. But then they turn around and sell Jehovah's house to a church, that is so hypocritical. It's unbelievable. That's what I have to say about that, that one. Uh, it's like double standards, right, Nadine? Uh, you, yeah. you can't do it, but they can do it. How is it that 
You'd want right. to cont continue right. to follow an organization like that. That's sickening. Right. And then they're providing um, the Kingdom Hall to the church so that their church, church members from Babylon the Great can come to church. That was once a Kingdom Hall. So now can a Jehovah's Witness attend the property that is now a church? Would it be okay since it was once Jehovah's house? Well, the, the, I mean, the, the, you, you look at all of us being ex-Jehovah's Witnesses. We get it. You, you get it. Nadine, you're a shop woman. You, you get it. But does the, does the Jehovah's Witness who is going to the meetings and is a PME, do you think they're getting it? I would would hope so. My goodness, it's it's all about money. It's all about the almighty dollar. So if they can make money off of whoever they can, that they will. So that's I wanted to say that about that. And then I wanted to also comment about when Fran called in. Um, I met Fran in person. I met Joe and Fran, and they are the most fantastic, loving people that I've ever met. And I wish that I lived close to Fran because I'd like to pop over and, you know, visit with them. And, and I would like it if she could come to my place too. They are the best people. And I cannot believe that their daughter's landlord could be so cruel and so awful. And they're supposed to be the one true religion. And these people write notes like that it's 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 horrible it's awful and and especially to fran joe and fran they're like the nicest people in the world and um anyways i wanted to say that oh, about, well uh, Nadine, that's and, a, and i met them well, i met them in person i know i know you yeah. did and they speak very highly of you but i i got thinking the same thing when fran was saying that geez fran and joe they they don't have a mean bone in their body and yet they get attacked. No. They get attacked like this. That's not fair. It's it's awful, and it just shows how unloving and unchristian they really are, especially if they're claiming to be the one true religion. Nadine, I mean, I'm sure you wake up at night and you sometimes can't get back to sleep thinking how stupid right. some of the witnesses are. Nadine, right. Thank you for checking in with us tonight. Always good to hear from you. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. And one last thing is I vote for Gilbert to be a keynote speaker. He's excellent. Well, we He's got a we, really good friend. We we got we got him already booked right after the bathroom break. Yes, right after the bathroom oh. break. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He has his own channel and he does really good videos and he's very entertaining and he's very smart. He's very. Sometimes, if I have a question, I'll I'll text him and go, "Okay, what about this?" And he'll text me back. And so he's a very smart guy, very nice, very personable, and I think he would be great um, at the convention. I'm gonna try to come. I I want to. Um, I know I sent you an email saying to you know count me in. Um, so I'm gonna really try to do that. Well, we'll see what happens, uh, Nadine. It's all it's all uh, coming to fruition here, and we got time, and we never know. Someone might make some generous contribution or something. I'm not asking for that, but someone might say, "Geez, Rick, you know, let let's. I want I want you to get some people here, to speak. We'll, we'll see what happens. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that. I don't ask for anybody to do anything, but you know, sometimes miraculous things happen. Thank thank you, Nadine. Thank you. Right. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. All right, you're on the six mm -hmm. screens, JW World News. That's the news. The Watchtower doesn't want us talking about, but we talk about it every Saturday night and every other Sunday right here on the six screens tele network. Wow. Now, yeah, so if you're out there, Eric, listening in, just hang in. We'll get your program going here in a little bit. Uh, we got so many people coming in tonight. We're running a little late uh, uh, because of the earlier program with Barbara. So just hang in with us, Eric. We'll be right with you in a while. But, you know, I, I just wanted to bring this up tonight because I think it should be something that we should discuss. And it's concerning 
Jehovah's Witness elders hiring people to spy on you. Have you ever thought of elders spying on you? Uh, I've, I've had people call into the six screens. I've been doing this program for 20 years, and I've had a number of people say that, yeah, the, the, the elders, they spy on me, or they have people spy on me. Have you ever witnessed that? So the thing is, what, what we see here is the Jehovah's Witness elders, they'll ask, actually ask people uh, in the congregation to spy on you. Now, generally, it has to do with uh, sexual matters. It has to do with immorality, and the witnesses will bring this up. Uh, the elders will actually come to people in the congregation and say, could you watch brother so-and-so? Could you watch this or sister so-and-so? And they're watching to see if, you know, if there's a sister entering the brother's house or vice versa, and they watch it like a hawk. I mean, what type of an organization is that? where, you know, you have to be spied upon? Does this actually happen? Yes, it does. I have so many reports coming in here to the six screens of people telling me they have been spied on. Yes, people actually saying that people have come by and taken pictures of them, and they're always looking for immorality. In fact, even one man, I got information from him that he was telling me that what happened is he left his mother and father. He got his own apartment. But when he got the apartment, the witnesses began spying on him because they thought that he might have been inviting some women up to his apartment. So they actually spied on him. This never happened. He never did this. But they just kind of took it upon themselves to spy on him. Do you enjoy being in an organization that spies on you? Is there anybody out there that has ever experienced that? That's very creepy, I know. But has anybody out there ever experienced witnesses spying on them? Uh, I've had so many people write me here that I had to bring this up. Are you running? You oh, run? yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. Well, hold on. Hold on one second. Let's go with... Uh, Let's go with 504, 540 first. Let's hold on, 480, 540 first. Go ahead, 540. Hey, Rick. Um, I just met a new Jehovah Witness guy. Uh, when I did some work for him with my tobacco, and um, all he did was ask questions about me and my wife and other things. And then about two weeks ago, the brothers came over the house and talked to me. Then a couple uh, a, a couple days ago, I had two brothers come up to the house and talk to me again about something about Penny, my wife. And then they talked to her, uh, to her at the Kingdom Hall. And I said, you have no right to talk to my wife what you're saying. In June, and that's when I went and I consulted some other people in our county. So they always spy on just to find out what they want to find out. Okay. Well, I'm not well, well, so you, you, you do, you do, you do feel, David, that the that the witnesses have spied on you. Oh yeah, um, I've had a uh, Jehovah Witness black man follow my wife down to Richmond, Virginia, and I walk around uh, and, and and watch her and try to talk to her a couple of times. But um, my family and my sister uh, give me some uh, federal agents to watch my wife when she goes to these conventions. Federal agents? Yeah, could you kind of could you, could you elaborate on that? In other words, federal agents watching your wife going to a convention, David. That we 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 need more explanation on that. That is not connecting. Well, um, 
they're, they're, my, my sister works for the government and she um, sent some people to make sure she was okay and she wasn't going to get hurt by this guy he kept following her around for the last three or four conventions. He's been asking to try to go out with her. So, so I'm just trying to put this together in my head, David. Uh, you, you brought up federal agents following the witnesses. So you say your sister has been followed by federal agents. Is that what you said? No, my sister gave, uh, asked to, uh, she directed some people my way to watch my wife. Yeah. All right. Well, no, no, no doubt. I mean, that can be a little troubling. But, David, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you called in. I'm glad you called in. So you do agree that the watchtower does spy on people. Oh, oh yeah. This guy, this, this one guy that I went, I did some work for. He's had the witnesses come over in the last couple of weeks and everything else. Yeah. All right. Well, let's and go with that. We'll, we 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 get we we will stop it there. I mean, you you saying that happened, so we will go with that. So you are saying that. We're just trying to get a little survey here. Thank you, David, for calling in. All right, let's go to Dick Boogie nine seven eight. Dick, what do you have to say, Dick? Yeah, Rick. Um, two comments. <clears throat> One I've mentioned on six screens quite a bit over the years. The oldest asked me to. Uh, let them know if I saw a two-door brown Chevy Impala at the bottom of the street. You know, I, the street that I lived on. Well, I, I knew, you know, the single sister had an apartment at the bottom of the street. And I knew the, there's only one brother that had a brown Chevy two-door Impala. And he said, if you see that car, you know, you write down the, the uh, time and the date and all this. I agreed to that. Then I thought later, no, I'm not going to do that. So my street had a cutoff. So I go halfway down my street and take a shop right, and then I would uh, go to work. And so I was not in a position to ever see that brown Chevy. Um, I just want to comment on the the watchtower selling off uh, Kingdom Halls. Um, and I've mentioned this on six screens, you know, over the last few years. Me and my dad surveyed the property for the Drake Kingdom Hall. And um, we had a dedication to it. One of the anointed brothers, Kevin Bud, came and gave the talk. And when me and you went there, um, they had crucifixes on top of the building. And on, and on the sign, that building was dedicated to Jehovah God. And now there's some, according to the Jehovah's Witnesses, some false God is being worshipped in that building that was dedicated to Jehovah God. Can you imagine in the nation of Israel, if they were worshipping Baal inside of the Holy of Holies, what, what you know? What kind of curse would come down on the nation of Israel or the high priest? It's just unbelievable. I know in my life, um, there were so many weddings that I was invited to. Or I was in the wedding party and I had to say, no, I can't go into a kingdom. I can't go into a Catholic church. I can't go into a Catholic church. And, and it did look at me like I was crazy. Both of my parents, who were staunch Catholics, um, they got buried and had their funeral talk up in New Hampshire in a non-denominational chapel because they knew if they had a funeral in the Catholic Church, neither me nor my sister or my former wife would be able to attend. So they adjusted, you know, when it came to the last days of their life and they knew they were gonna pass, they they made arrangements that both of them would be buried, uh, be buried out of a um, an undenominational chapel, and now the Jehovah's Witnesses are going around 
selling kingdom halls and they're putting a big crucifix up on most of them. That is the biggest scam. That is hypocrisy in its epitome. I mean, it, it really is. And I also think you would talk about Norway and so forth. Nor- Norway, um, you know, we taught, we were taught as Jehovah's Witnesses that Satan and devil controls the governments. So here's Jehovah's organization. <laughs> yeah. Jehovah's organization going to the, um, the government of Norway and say, please, can we have some money? And if you don't give us money, we're, we're going to sue you. But I get scammed out of $40,000. It doesn't sound like much, but back in the early 80s, it was a lot of money. And I was told if I took my brother-in-law to court, and was a Jehovah's Witness, that I, would, I was certainly going to lose a ministerial servant, and I could possibly yeah, be disfellowshipped. And now that they have this association with all these different churches, some, Jeho- some kingdom halls, um, are being taken over by people selling marijuana because it's legal now in a lot of different states. It's, it's amazing, amazing how hypocritical this organization is. And it's also amazing that how many people stay in it, even though they're hearing these reports. Thank you, Rick. Well, Dick, I'm glad you brought that up about marijuana stores. In fact, there's one I know of specifically that uh, was a kingdom hall that is now a marijuana uh, dispensary. Unbelievable. Dick, you're right. Don't you ever change, as they always say. You're absolutely right on it. Uh, we did have, uh, we had Carrie. You want to come on 203, Carrie? You want to come on? I think, believe that's Carrie. Uh, I did see you on here. If you want to come back, that's fine. Uh, go ahead, 203. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, go ahead, Carrie. I, I'm here. Uh, listen, Rick, uh, I don't know if you're aware, uh, this has nothing to do with uh, all that other stuff you were talking about, but I wanted to let you know that Josh Rivera, uh, David alias David King, his mom just passed away on the 8th, actually in the middle of the eclipse. <laughs> and um, he was an avid caller. Josh had many shows on on six screens, uh, a great guy. And I just want to let you know that his mom passed away um, um, a few days ago. So I felt it needed to be mentioned for the people who did listen to Josh. Well, thank, thank, thank you, Carol, uh, Carrie, for bringing that up. Because Carrie, you can call me Carol. All right. So, so what happened is uh, Josh did get a hold of me. And he did tell me his mother died, Nora. And like you say, she died during the eclipse of all things. And he was sad. I mean, it really, he was very close oh. to his mother. And he um, he was associated with us here in the six screens. So it looks like next Saturday, I'm not sure, but we will be doing a service for her here on the six screens. We, oh, I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah, so really, I am so yeah, happy. so uh, such a, a deep respect for for both of them. I mean, um, Josh is having a hard time. He took very good care of his mother, and it's a sad situation when you lose somebody like that. But, anyways, I don't. I don't want to take any more of your time. You've got another show coming on. Well, no, Carrie, no, I really appreciate you bringing this up, Carol, because I, I say Carol, Carrie, but, but, but the thing is, I, I, mad. I, I, appre- I appreciate you bringing it up because I have been in touch with Josh numerous times this week, and we are putting together Good. a service. You know, he, he told me that his, his mother, Nora, was her name, and, and she really loved the six screens. Uh, yes, and, she did. and in fact, uh, he told me that that's one of the reasons why she left the Watchtower. Is because of the six screens, and wow, he says, "I didn't know that." Yeah, he told me that you know, Rick, it, the, the six screens meant so much to my mom, and you know that touched my heart. Yeah. I, I never realized that. But oh, yeah, it should. It should. It's an honor. Yeah, it but, really is for him to call me and tell she me was that a very nice lady. Oh, she was. A, nice she was a beautiful, lady. a beautiful woman. Yeah. And of course, you yeah. know, Josh, he had some feelings to the six screens and. He was somewhat apologetic to the whole thing, but you know, I, I don't, yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't hold 
ill feelings. And I said, Josh, I'll be glad to work with you. If you if he said, I, I'm very, very glad because that last episode without bringing it at all up, uh, uh, was, uh, pretty nasty that night, yeah. but, uh, emotions were flying and, um, things happen. People say things. Um, but anyways, anyways, I am glad that you are talking to him. He needs people surrounding him now. He really does. Well, he so. brought, he brought up something, Carol, that caught my attention he says, you know, Rick, there's a lot of ex-Jehovah's Witnesses, and when they die, there's no service, there's no attention given to them. They just go to the grave, and that's it. He says, you know, why why couldn't we have something here on the six screens even that would acknowledge and do a little service for ex-Witnesses that die? So I'm going to be working with Josh, and hopefully we can have a program that could show some tribute uh, show some concern, if you would, to people that have died in the ex-witness world and have a little service That's for them. That's a great idea. Isn't that a good that idea? That's a great well, idea. Well, he came up yes. with it. I didn't come up with it. He came up with it. So I thought it was a good idea. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. Yeah. Because so well, many. Thank you very much, Rick. Well, always uh, good. Carol, always good to hear from you. You're a, a great lady. I love you a lot. People on here love you too, you Carol. Better. Well, we do it. Well, you keep you keep cranking away at it. Thank you, Carol. Yeah, I will. Thank you, Carol. Okay. All right, good yeah, girl. Bye bye. All right, so that's Carol. So yeah, okay. so that's uh, that's what we're doing. So maybe next Saturday, if all goes well, we're gonna do a little memorial service for Nora. That would be Josh Rivera's mother, and uh, that would that would be good. Well, you're on the six screens, tell the network, and we're so glad you're with us tonight. We got Eric. He's in the bullpen. He's waiting to come in. Uh Okay, so we talked about spying. We'll let that one go. We get some other things. We'll let go. No, I didn't comment yet. Oh, I, I wanted oh, to comment. Okay, well, okay. I'm waiting to comment. Okay, to all right. Comment. Well, what we what we have, Jeff. I mean, uh, that that's uh, I believe that's Zachary. But hold on, yeah. Zachary. We do have one person before you that I said could come on. So that would be four eight zero. Go ahead, four eight zero. You're on with us. I wanted to talk about the spying. Go ahead. I think this. Uh, I think this goes back to the two witness rule. You know, so me and my buddy, he he thought his wife was cheating on him, and they were construction workers and everything. And he he says, "I'm going out of town to work," and we went and sat down, but really he wasn't. Yeah, going out of town. We went and sat down the road and watched this guy go to his house, spend all night there with his wife, and you know because he needed uh, another witness, the two witness rule. And I, I'm not a rat. I'm not a snitch or anything like that. But I would always. It, the two witness rule, you know, it doesn't just uh, apply to, uh, you know, uh, pedophilia and, you know, messing with little kids. You need to have that two witness rule for all kinds of things in that organization. So you have to spy. You have to get uh, confirmation. Well, there you go. No, I'm with you. So that's fine. So you do agree uh, then, Wyatt Earp, uh, that there is spying going on in the Watchtower? Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, we've had a lot of people confirm that. But thank you very much. Thank you, Wyatt Earp. Good to hear from you. Uh, let's move on. Let's go to Zachary. Zachary, you're on with us. Go ahead. Rick, hi. Um, I, I, I wanted to comment on that same thing, but it's a slightly different. Um, there's, if you don't have two witnesses, uh, there's um, a statement in that 
pay attention to yourselves in the Flock book, which is the old green one, the one prior to 2010, it said something about if there's strong circumstantial evidence, then that can be used as proof. Strong circumstantial evidence. So under that, in the, the fornication section, in Pernia section, they say that um, strong circumstantial evidence is where, for example, a person uh, spends the night at the house of a known prostitute or, um, or spends the night with a known prostitute or with a known homosexual. That's the statement, the best I can remember it, uh, from the plot book. Okay. So think of this. A circuit overseer is visiting a body of elders, and he's pointing that out. And he wants to talk about um, actually applying it practically. And so he explains to the body of he explains to the body of elders that um, that uh, that means that the person who someone needs to be outside of that house all night long. It's like you can't have one person and then they leave um, for bathroom break or anything like that. You know, they've got to come, they've got to be there all night long. And you need more than just one person because, you know, you need two witnesses. And then he starts to talk about how to apply it practically. Do you know what he told the elders they might need to do? To make sure they're there all night. I and, have, no, and I, I have no idea. Tell us, Zach. And that they don't lose sight of the house because, you know, maybe you got two people there mm -hmm. and they're watching this house all night. Do you know he told us that we might need to have a bottle with us to pee in to? Is that what he said? Yeah, he, he, he was talking about practically applying this and you might need to have something to pee into so that you're there all night. You can be a witness that they were there all night long. I sat there listening to that and I thought, there's no way that I'm going to be involved in anything like that. They just have to leave. The, yeah, just Jehovah knows. You know, that's all. Leave it up to Jehovah knows. He knows. And if they need to be exposed, he'll expose. There's no way would I sit in a, a car with people and have a bottle to pee in, too. Sorry. Well, well no, I mean, I, well, th that's good you emphatically brought that in because that's what they do. So, I mean, yeah. you are assuring the people listening into this program tonight that spying goes on in the watchtower. I've never done it myself. I don't know of anyone who has, but that it is a practical, it is um, to apply some of the principles for um, strong circumstantial evidence, they would have to be spying all night outside someone's house. How sick is that? How? With a bottle to relieve themselves into. Well, you know, not, not only that, I mean, it's kind of a little bit intrusive to do that to someone. And, you know, even yeah. if, if I was sent on an assignment by the elders to go spy on someone, that would bother my conscience. It's none of my business. Yeah. It's none of my yeah. business. But yet the watchtower, the elders would put people in that position. That could bother people. There's plenty of people. Yeah. In fact, I got information coming in here today at the six screens All when right. I brought this subject up. And many people said that, you know, they were asked. They were asked to go spy, but they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't do it. Uh, go ahead. You're on with us. Go ahead. Yeah, Rick. Uh, first of all, my condolences to Josh. And uh, I remember back in the mid-'80s, we go back to talking about Babylon the Great. Uh, I remember uh, a bunch of brothers were going to work on they they had a bid on a job or they're going to bid on a job and they actually got it to do some work for a church and uh it all it went all the way to the circuit overseer and maybe above that i don't know but they were you know work was pretty scarce around here 
And they were told that they couldn't do the work because it was Babylon the Great. You know, it was on another church. It wasn't on the Kingdom Hall, of, of course, or anything. But, uh, yeah, I just wanted to add that comment. Well, Jeff, always good to hear from you. My goodness gracious, always good to hear from Jeff from Iowa. Thank you, Jeff, for calling into the six screens tonight. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. All right, Thank well, you. let's uh, let's uh, move on here. We got Eric. He's in the bullpen. He's waiting to come on with his program, Awakening After the Watchtower. But uh, let's do this before we uh, continue on. We got the secret words. We got the secret words here in this sealed envelope. I don't believe anyone said the secret words tonight. Now, all you folks calling in, I have four words in this sealed envelope, but nobody got it tonight. I, I want to give these books away. Let me show you the books once again. Let me just change our settings here. Let's, uh, let's change the settings so you can see what I'm talking about. Now, right over there, those are the books. Those are the books that we want to give away. The Desolation of the Sanctuary, Millions Now Living Will Never Die, and uh, The People for His Name. Uh, these are books about Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, some are just exposing the witnesses, and The Millions Now Living was actually written by the Jehovah's Witnesses by the Watchtower. So I wanted to give those away, but nobody said the secret word. So what we're going to do here tonight, we have a little game we play at the end of the program. I'm going to give you some clues. I'm going to give you some clues to what the secret words are in our sealed envelope. So let me open it up, and then we'll be able to show you what these words were. Believe me, friends, this is all legitimate. These have been sealed in this sealed envelope, as we say. Now, I'm going to give you some clues, and I'm going to see if you guys can get these secret words here tonight because I want to give some of these books away. We have a friend, Nathan Natus. That's his fictitious name. You know him on jw.org. Uh, I'm sorry, .n, not .org. But Nathan Natus, he has given us these books. So let's, let's just kind of play a little game here. I want to give these away. I'll give you a clue to what the secret words here tonight. Okay. Well, we all... What's that? I'm going to win. Well, let's see if you can. Let's see if you can. So here's the secret. we got four of them we're going to be working with here tonight. So I'm going to ask. I'm going to give you some clues and see if someone can win these books. At least you're going to get one book. If you get more than one, you're going to get a couple of books. So let's go with this. Well, as Jehovah's Witnesses, we always look forward to the two-day. Two-day what? Two-day what? We always look forward to the two-day. No one wants to comment? Go ahead, speak up. Two-day what? All right, let me give you another clue. Convention? Uh, no, not convention. Assembly? Assembly. Who's this? Um, Anne-Marie. Anne, well, Anne-Marie, you, you, you want a book. You want a book. So why don't you pick out, you like the millions now living will never die? A people for his name, or uh, do you like the other one? The uh, desolations of the sanctuary. What would you like? Desolation one. The what would you think? Uh, I, I think you might like that one. That that's about the watch are exposing them and their false prophecies and everything else. I think you like that one. Thank you so much, Rick. All right. I love the millions book, but I already have it. You have okay, fine. So you get the desolation of the sanctuary. Okay, so let's move on here. Let me give you another clue. So Anne Marie got that one. So we had we had four secret words tonight. I was hoping the duck could have came down, but I didn't hear it. So here is another clue to one of the secret words. Now put your thinking caps on. I want you to think about this. So here's the next clue to the secret word. Oh, we always hated getting up on Saturday morning. We always hated getting up on Saturday morning. Field service. Field service. Is that you, Debbie? Yes, sir. Well, you got it. You you got field service. So you're looking at you on the screen there. Do you want people for his name? Millions now living yes. people for his name. Okay, so yes. 
I believe I have your email, but send it to me again. So I have it. I'm uh, not to email, but your physical address so I can send it to you. Okay. Okay. Send me the secret address. We'll put it out for you. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So Thank there you me. go. So I, I want to give these books away. I, I got, I got plenty of them here. I want you to have the books. So let's, all right. So let's go with another. Now we have four secret words tonight. So here's another one. I'm going to give you some clues. All right. Uh, he was a great influencer to the Watchtower. He was a great influencer to the Watchtower. Rutherford. No. Nope. He had a wife, but his wife divorced him. Russell Kors. Pastor Russell. Who was that? Who was that? Was that Emory again? Sorry, I just yeah, I just popped out. Sorry. All right. Well, Emory, you get to, you, you get well. Actually, it's actually Pastor Russell. We didn't hear it, but I'll, I'll take Russell. So, Emory, I'm going to send you another book. I, I got plenty of books here. So you're going to get you got a couple of books coming your way, Emory. Good for you, Emory. Very good. All right, so we got three of the secrets. I don't want anybody to be mad at me. Give it to somebody else if they no, want. No, no, nobody's no, nobody's no, nobody's no, 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 no. You, you, you earned it. You earned it. You guessed it. So we give everyone a chance to do it. All right, everyone has a chance to do it. So let's take a look here. I'm looking at YouTube too. I mean, the first response we get, uh, you will get it. All right, so let's go with this. Uh, okay, now we have one more secret word here tonight. I, I want to give these books away. I, I, I really want to get them in the hands of people. So here is the clue for the last secret word here on Six Screens of the Watchtower. Uh, this has to do with the Watchtower. What other names are they known as? What other names? What? Zion's Watchtower. Nope. Take another shot. Who would like to say it? Go ahead. Speak right up. Watchtower Bible Tract Society. Uh, Bible Student. Hold on. De was that you, Debbie? Watchtower Bible Tract Society? Yes. Well, you got another one. I'm going to send you another book. Okay. So you you get okay. you get two books. My goodness, you and Anne Marie. I mean, have you guys been reading my notes or what? <laughs> of course we have. You know we're cheating. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, no, that's that's interesting to say it. Well, let me go back. Let me get my settings back here. Get the uh, get me back to where I should be. Uh, all right, hold on one second. Let me go back on here. Um, all right. So, okay, so we got some winners. Debbie, you get two books. Amory gets two books. Uh, yeah, this is good. We we like we love. Another one can I get? Besides the people for his name. Uh, okay, can I we get the desolation. Yeah, we got the yeah, get the desolation of the sanctuary. I would suggest that one. That's a good one. Okay, that's a good one. Yeah, but so, I mean, you have two of them, right? Yeah, you get I two mean, of them. Amory, when I get one. So you're gonna get you want to get desolation of the sanctuary, and the other one you wanted, Debbie. Send send me an email. People for his name. Uh, people for his yeah. name. So send send me an email. This is Debbie. Give me the email. I'll have, and send your address as well, your physical address, so it'll be easier for me to find okay. it, and I can send it off. Thank and, you, Rick. And they'll be I really way. appreciate and it. And those that have one books, they're coming. They're coming. The post office is a little slow, but uh, they, they are coming. This week, it'll be showing up. Okay, so thank you, Debbie. Thank you, Anne-Marie. Very good. Now, listen, if you like this channel, if you like what you hear here on this YouTube channel, why don't you subscribe to it? I'm not, I'm not going to put a fire on your feet, but I'm saying you know, we could really reach more people if you subscribe to this channel. So if you could do that, that would help us. And also on Facebook, like us, share it. Get the word out there that we, there's a program every Saturday night uh, talking about what's going on behind the curtains of the Watchtower. So take advantage of that and put it out there, friends. Let's all work together. Let's work together and make this a monumental uh, position in the world of the ex-witness world so they can connect and they can hear people calling in in live time. I, I believe it can work. It is working. More and more people are coming in. So go ahead and subscribe to our 
YouTube channel, please. And also like us on Facebook and share us. Well, anyways, I think we can end it there. I don't think we have anything else to talk about. There's no Six Screen Sunday tomorrow. That'll be next week. And write me if you think you can come to the convention. That is so amazing. I'm looking forward to the first ex-Jehovah's Witness convention. And everyone out there, write me and tell me. I'd like to come. Things are a little difficult. Let me know. Maybe we can get you some help. And maybe there's someone that can speak up here and want to help you as well to come. So let's see what happens. Friends, thank you for coming in tonight and being with us right here on the Six Greens Tele Network, JW World News. Now, listen, I want to tell you this. I want you guys to keep standing tall. Don't you ever give up. Don't you ever give in or out. And keep waving that flag of victory. And the last one, leaving the watchtower, please turn off the new light. We're going to the next program, Awakening After the Watchtower, with our good friend, Eric. Thank you for being with us. All the people that called in, all the people that have commented on Facebook, on YouTube, and the various platforms. We really appreciate it. Good night, everyone. Eric is coming up next. Don't go anywhere. All right.